So I think I don't have a full grasp, really, of what your your day to day is like. I know lately you've been scouting a lot, but for people that don't know, like me, what is your day to day like? Well, the the day to day varies, Adam, depending on uh, the day. And I think the the majority of uh, my time is spent with a combination of uh, scouting, a combination of um, helping to manage and communicate the various departments that are within our our basketball umbrella, whether it's uh, collaborating with Frank and his staff, whether it's collaborating with our scouting staff, whether it's talking to our analytical department uh, or our legal salary cap department. So we're obviously in, in constant communication on a daily basis trying to, trying to troubleshoot things and, and find solutions. Um, and then there's certainly some travel, you know, related to scouting and, and when the team's on the road. So it just kind of depends on the day and, and the time of year, but uh, it usually involves those components. From your perspective, from, from the front office perspective, why do you think the team hasn't been playing as well as you'd hoped this season? Well, that's a good question. And obviously, if we had the answer to it, we would um, be doing something about it. I think it's clear that the season has been frustrating for us. Um, we're not hiding from that. We're uh, certainly not happy about that. But um, it is what it is. And we tried to put together a team this summer that um, could be a defensive-minded sort of defensive um, identity juggernaut with the personnel we brought in and with uh, Frank and his, his defensive um, history. And it just hasn't found any traction. You know, we, we've seen some glimpses of it, I think. We've seen the potential we have, but uh, we've struggled to, to grab hold of any consistency. So I think that's been uh, the most frustrating part, and that's what we're trying to figure out how to correct. It's not, which leads me, to, which was my next question. It doesn't, I mean, with Biz and Serge and Alfred and Aaron Gordon, I mean, it would seem that the personnel for defense is there, but it just hasn't worked out that way. Yeah, that was the vision for sure. Um, and again, we've shown glimpses throughout the year. Um, we had a, a good chunk of the season where we were the best defense in the, in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And then we've had other chunks of the season where we've been not even close to that. And so, um, that's something for us that we just have a hard time pinpointing exactly why. There are a lot of factors that go into, um, you know, team dynamics and such. But uh, our belief and our opinion is that while it has been a frustrating season, um, you know, we're still not out of it. And we still have a, a ways to go. And we're going to look to um, improve the team where we can coming up at the trade deadline in a few weeks. When you signed uh, Biz and you got Surge to go along with Vooch, I think uh, from an outsider perspective, a lot of people thought it might have been a little bit of a gamble to have three players essentially at the same position. Um, have you seen enough to decide whether or not that has worked? You know, I think, I think it's a fair question, and I think that's a debate that, um, you know, we had prior to, to putting that front court together, and certainly we've had that debate and discussion throughout the season. I, I, I think there is still time to figure out a way um, to rectify, again, especially that defensive side, because we've seen it. Um, but we're also open and exploring may, uh, ways to possibly, um, you know, maybe downsize or, or find ways to play a little bit, you know, smaller. Uh, does that mean trading, or what, where, what do you mean by that? It could be a lot of different things. It could be different um, lineups or combinations that we have in-house. It could be exploring ways to, um, you know, to get better externally. So it could be both, really. Why, why do you think Mario Hazonia hasn't been effective? And then this is kind of on my own interesting idea. I know it's not a thing that normally happens, but has there ever been any discussion about sending him to the D-League to get more time and more minutes? Well, you know, we have um, the utmost confidence in Mario's potential and his ability to perform at a high level. We think he's going to be a really good NBA player. He's, he's very young. He's only in his second season, and it's not uncommon if you go back and look at um, the history of, of NBA players who turn out to be, whether it's a really good player or a, a nice role player, um, oftentimes there are some bumps in the road during the first couple, two, three seasons. Um, and I think Mario's still trying to figure out the nuance of the NBA game, the speed of the game, and um, just trying to get comfortable in, in the role we're asking him to play. So, um, you know, I think this season for him, I think we did expect a little bit more, 
but we also um, are being very patient with him because of the potential in the town he has. And you know, as it relates to the to the development league, I think um, the big hurdle or challenge for us, Adam, is uh, just the proximity. You know, we, right now we have the team in Erie, Pennsylvania, yeah. which um, does make it challenging for travel and logistics. And we think it makes uh, more sense to have Mario in practice and at games and ob observing and. Um, you know, taking sort of mental notes um, if he's not in the game as to what it is we're asking him to do. And I think with the development team moving here locally next year, we'll provide um, a much greater opportunity to utilize it um, in different ways. Lakeland's a little bit closer. <laughs> Just a smidge, yeah. <laughs> um, am I right to say that you've been a big proponent of Alfred? And am I also right when I say that in my mind, I've seen the last few months a big improvement in him? his effectiveness and his aggressiveness? Yeah, I, we, we believe in Alfred. We really do. We believe in um, our young players. We believe in their ability to continue to get better. Um, you know, I think that when it comes to Alfred, the point guard position is the hardest position to find from a team building standpoint, and it's also the hardest position to learn. And as a, as a third year player who has had a few coaches, which I think has made it, you know, challenging for him and fairness for him especially that position mm -hmm. I think he has started to um, to get more confident and to be more consistent we still need more consistency out of him like we do our whole team uh, but we have we have high hopes for Alfred we believe in him quite a bit but he had you have seen some improvement it, I mean it looks to me just from the naked eye that he's much more aggressive and effective the last couple months certainly the last couple months yeah. he's been you know his his play has been on the uptick his, his shooting has improved his ability to finish has improved his free throw shooting has improved mm -hmm. um, so hopefully he can continue that that direction uh, with the roster kind of set up the way it is now is it difficult for Aaron to to find the the right position his his right spot in the lineup and, and how do you think his play has been this well, season? Well, that's a good question and you know we look at Aaron as a forward, right? There's a lot of debate about is he a power forward, is he a small forward? We, we view the beauty and the unique quality of Aaron that he can play both positions and when we made the trade for Serge, when we, we tried to really fortify our front court, we said to ourselves, okay, well let's, let's experiment with Aaron at the three and let's see what that looks like. He played primarily at the four last season. Um, and, you know, our look at it internally is the things we're asking him to do this year, defend on the perimeter, put the ball in his hands a little bit more. Um, we think that bodes well for him, whether he stays at the three or we slide him back to the four. I think that experience and that workload will only benefit him. And we think he's played well. I mean, it's been up and down for sure. Again, like, you know, you'd expect with, with most young players. Um, you know, we have our, our starting point guard and our starting small forward or still very young and we're asking quite a bit from them and um, as we should but we also I think continue to need to be um, just mindful of, of their development curve and, and their growth potential. Is it fair to say that you guys have been hit with more injuries than usual compared to other NBA teams this this season especially in that it's kind of been concentrated at one position? You know I don't know I, I think every team goes through injury phases, they go through phases of health, they go through phases of fortune, they go through phases of bad luck. I think that's just part of um, the cycle and part of pro sports. I think our injury rate this year is um, probably not any more intense than other teams have experienced. I think the, the hard part has been, to your point, the concentration of really that shooting guard position. Yeah. And, you know, for a team, it's, it's no secret we, we lack outside perimeter range shooting. It's, it's certainly been um, it's been a challenge with, with Evan and Jody, you know, having missed as many games as they have. In, uh, what are your thoughts on the job that, that Frank Vogel has done this season? I think Frank's done a great job. I, I really do. I think we're really, really lucky to have Frank. His, um, his spirit, his mind for the game, his positive nature really is um, a really healthy thing for our organization. And I think that, you know, this is a new uh, chapter in Frank's coaching career. There's um, a new team, a lot of new pieces to the team, a lot of new dynamics and personalities that, that he's still navigating. So um, while we're all frustrated and, and we certainly, um, you know, expected to be in a better place at this point in the season, um, you know, I think we have to continue to just be patient with Frank and let him sort things out. I think he's done a, a heck of a job and we're really, really lucky to have him. In, in baseball, they have the, the idea when you're approaching the trade deadline here, you're either a buyer or a seller. What are the magic right now? 
We are a, um, a beller, I guess. It's, it's a combination, <laughs> right? It's, it's about the opportunities, and it's about um, we, have to, we have to try to find a way to improve, right? And, and we'll look and, and scour and, and try to figure out ways to do that. I think we, we need some more offense. We need some, uh, some more you know, ability on the front court or in the back court or really wherever, just shot makers and playmakers and things of that nature. Um, we see the voids, I think, on the team that we need to, um, to try to address, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do some of that you know, with the upcoming deadline. From an outside perspective along those lines, it seems to me that there, you have at least a couple of players who would be really valuable as far as a trade. So obviously you wouldn't ever give me any specifics, and I'm not asking you to, but um, have you been receiving interest from outside teams that would prove that true? Yeah, so you know, I think one of the um, positions we're in is a position of strength because we have players on our team that have value throughout the league yeah. and it's our decision to figure out um, you know what opportunities are out there where can we get better um, the goal is to make the playoffs the goal is also not to mortgage the farm uh, just to get in the playoffs so we have to figure out a way to strike that balance um, but we are in a, in a good position in the sense that other teams see our players as, as having a lot of value. Does that mean you are getting a lot of interest from other teams? There, there is quite a bit of interest. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of chatter this time of year, as you would expect. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't say we're surprised by the interest. I think we're, um, it's, it's a realistic, I guess, temperature that, that we take with teams and teams take with us. But certainly our players have value, yeah. So along those lines, when I read trade rumors online or from other sources, what, what percentage of what of what I read, would you say is, is true or at least has some merit? I would say, um, just as a ballpark, yes. I would say maybe 10%. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very low. I know you're probably shocked to hear that, but it's, it's probably much, much lower than the average fan would, would imagine. Well, I mean, of course I never assume that all of it is true, but I, I kind of thought maybe it would be more like 50-50. I would say around more around 10% or so, yeah, maybe 8%, 8 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, is it funny for you when you read stuff that's completely off the wall and wrong like that? Um, I wouldn't say it's funny because sometimes it poses challenges internally, right? If a player reads something or an agent mm -hmm. reads something and they're saying, hey, you're trying to trade me, what's going on? And you have to, you know, go into put out fire mode. But um, typically it's, it's just chatter and noise that it's just part of the undercurrent of the season that I think most teams, especially us, just um, kind of ignore, to be honest with you. How do you sell the city, the team, the organization to a potential free agent, a potential player here? I think we're in a, you know, we talked about power of strength at the trade deadline. I think we're in a power of strength as it relates to free agency. We, we have um, great weather here. We have a great facility. We have an organization that has a first-class reputation. Um, and, you know, we'll be very aggressive in our pursuit of free agents that we feel fit our team. Um, but we don't feel in any, any sense that we're at a, a deficit in that regard. I assume that scoring, shooting is the number one priority for you this time of year. It is. You know, we have to find a way to um, infuse more offense into our, our roster. I think, you know, as we look at the season and as we look at solutions to try to find moving forward, um, there's an internal and there's an external. Internally, we have to find a way to solidify our defensive roots. We feel like we, we can be and should be a much better defensive team than we've shown. Um, on the flip side, externally, we have to add some shooting and some shot making to complement that um, because we're not going to find that necessarily internally, at least not um, by season's end. You know, we have guys who are developing as shooters, but they're not where they, they quite need to be. So it's going to be it's going to be a balance of fixing some things internally and looking to address some things externally. Do you personally listen to the outside talk uh, from outside the organization about you and your job performance, and how difficult is it to tune that out? Well, I think it certainly it comes with the territory, first and foremost. You know, we, we and, and myself, I don't try to personally really immerse myself in that stuff, but certainly I'm aware of um, the chatter. And, and I think, honestly, I think it's warranted. I, I think fans have a right to be frustrated. Um, the passion with, you. With, with me and, and with our team. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that um, you know we're we're rebuilding. We're we're building, and that's um, it's a challenging project. And we hope and expected it to be a little further along. Um, at the same time, we really believe we're not that far away. We really, in in our core, believe that we need to tweak the team a little bit. 
We have some real high potential players on the team. We have a great coach who we really believe in. And it's, it's continuing to add a few more pieces. But if you look at the Eastern Conference and um, how clustered it is, we feel like you know we're right there. Had we found a way to win three or four more games over the, the last 50 games or so, we, we'd be right in the hunt. We're, we're still in the hunt. So um, I say all that to say that the, the criticism is warranted. It's, um, I think it's it's in some ways welcome. I like the fact that our fans are showing, um, you know, are voicing their concern and their frustration. And I also know that, that a lot of them still believe in us and, and are sticking with us. So where does the team go from here? Where, where, what happens now? Well, I thought we just talked about that for the yeah. last 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's, it's trying to improve the team with yeah. some shooting, maybe some more experience, um, continuing to develop the players that we have on the team that we think um, are still just scratching the surface of how good they can they can be so uh, it's a it's a combination of things but um, just rewind the last 10 minutes and maybe that'll give you a, a little bit of an answer is this a fun time for you are you, are you still enjoying yourself on the job I do really enjoy this job for for many reasons it's it's a challenging job it's a stressful job um, but that comes with the territory and personally I get to work for a, a great organization with great people in a, in a great city and we're committed to, to getting this thing right.